students last class we discussed about iupac nomenclature of organic compounds we already discussed two rules related to iupac nomenclature the first one is longest chain rule second one position of substituent today we are going to discussing the remaining uh, set of rules rule number 3 presence of more than one same substituent if same substituent or side chain occurs more than once the prefixes di di for two tri tetra penta hexa etc are attached to the names of the substituents second compound the longest chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven carbon atoms present in the compound therefore word root h it is a saturated compound any then the second position two methyl groups fourth carbonate attached to two methyl group that means in total four methyl groups present in the compound so here we have to denote the positions 2, 2 4, 4 then hyphen first alphabet should be capital tetra 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 for four tetra methyl heptane so name of the compound is 2 2 4 4 tetra methyl heptane next fourth rule name different substituents If an organic compound contains two or more different substituents or side chains, then we have to consider the alphabetic order. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms present in the organic compound. Therefore, H is the bond root, single bonded compound Ane. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. that means we are giving the number to the carbon atom from this it clear that the second carbon is attached to ethyl group ethyl group then third and fifth carbon is attached to methyl group methyl groups that means in this compound two different substituents are present therefore here we have to consider the alphabetic order that means e comes before n so the name of the compound is 2 e di 3 comma 3 di methyl hexane so in the case of different substituents we have to consider the alphabetic order along with the appropriate positions next fifth rule naming different substituents at equivalent position if two different substituent or uh, side chains are at equivalent position from the two ends of the chain then numbering of the chain is done in such a way that the group which comes first in the alphabetic order gets lower number for example if you start numbering from this end then methyl group is present at the third carbon and ethyl group at the fifth position if you start numbering from this side then ethyl group at the third position and methyl group at the fifth position ethyl group and methyl group two different uh, substituents but they are uh, attached at the same position but the numbering side is different but they are attached at the same position in this case we have to consider the alphabetic order that means here e comes before than m therefore the correct way of numbering is right to left this compound consists of seven carbon atom therefore word root is h saturated compound ane then here the ethyl group at the third position so e thyl group attached at the third position 3 hyphen ethyl group again hyphen 5 methyl heptane so name of the compound is 3 ethyl 5 methyl heptane sixth rule 
lowest set of locants. When two or more different sets of locants are possible, that set of locants, which when compared term by term with other sets, each in order of increasing magnitude has the lowest term at the first point of difference. Locant. Locant means position of substituent. Locant means position of substituent. In this case, the set of locants are 2, 3, 5. Whereas in the second case, 2, 4, 5. The first set of locant is correct because it is smaller than the second set of locants. For that, we have to compare each set of locants. First, 2, 2. Both are same in these two cases. Then, second set, 3, 4. 3 is less than 4. Therefore, this is the correct way of numbering. Next one is 5, 5. But, we have to consider the first point of difference. Here, the first point of difference is with the, the second locant, that is 3. Consider the compound. If you start numbering from this carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 2 methyl groups present at 4th carbon and 1 methyl group at 2nd carbon. So, set of locants are 2, 4, 4. If you start numbering from this side, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means 2 methyl groups attached at the 3rd carbon, 3, 3. Then the remaining one attached at the 5th carbon. Set of locants are 3, 3, 5. Here, the first set of locant is lower than second. Therefore, this is the correct way of numbering. Here, we have to compare each term. Here, the first position 2, whereas in the second case is 3. We know that 2 is less than 3. The first point of difference is with the first position. Therefore, this is the correct way of numbering. This rule is known as set of locants rule. Seventh rule. Naming the complex substituent. If the substituent is complex, then it is named as substituted alkyl group. Complex substituent means branch substituent. For example, this substituent is a complex, that means branch. This substituent attached at the fifth carbon of the parent chain. Here, the carbon atom attached to the uh, parent chain, that carbon atom gets number 1. Always give one number 1 to the carbon which is directly bonded to the parent chain. From that carbon, you have to select the longest chain. That is the first point. You have to give number 1 to a carbon atom which is directly bonded to the parent chain. Then second point related to complex substituent is the name of the complex substituent always written in bracket. Name of the complex substituent always written in bracket. In this case, the parent chain consists of 9 carbon atom. Therefore, word root is none. This is a saturated compound. Any is a primary suffix. Then 1, 2, 3. 3 uh, carbon atom present in the substituent. Therefore, it ends in propyl. Alkyl group propyl. Then first and second position, two substituents, methyl groups are there. So 1, 2 dimethyl propyl. So this is the name of the complex substituent. 1, 2 dimethyl propyl. So in order to avoid the confusion with the parent chain, we have to put the name in bracket. Then before bracket, you have to indicate the number of the carbon atom to which the complex substituent is attached. So, for complex substituent, you have to write the name in bracket. In the case of complex substituent, you have to consider the first alphabet for priority. That means, if various substituents are present in an organic compound, you have to consider the first alphabet inside the bracket. So, the main rules for complex substituent are the first point, the name of complex substituent always written in bracket. Second one, give carbon 1, number 1 to a carbon which is directly bonded to the parent chain. And third point, for alphabetic order, you have to consider the first alphabet inside the 
bracket. Students, write down the IUPAC name of the following compounds. Next class we will discuss about the rules of unsaturated compound. Till then, take care. Bye.